Yo, what's up? We are now at uh, Nebenes Supercharger and behind me here I have my Tesla Model 3 Performance, also known as uh, MC Hammer. And uh, MC Hammer now is almost two years old. In two months he'll be two years old, but I've actually sold him already. I signed a contract yesterday. So the last one of the last things I have to do is to measure the degradation. I did the degradation test seven months ago and that was at 60,000 kilometers. Now he has done 80,000 kilometers. See, I don't drive MC Hammer that much anymore nowadays. But um, we are now charging up at the supercharger. I did charge it up earlier, but then we had a little problem with some stau. So that's why we are redoing it here, the starting position. So uh, we are going to charge to 100% before we start measuring uh, by driving it. Let me show you inside now. See, the car reports it as 100%. And let me show you that here, we have driven 80,000 kilometers. <laughs> this car was delivered uh, in the 30th of March, 2019. So almost two years ago. So if you look here, this is scan my Tesla. It shows you that if we are at 100%, we are still taking five kilowatts. And this one number here is also interesting. Nominal remaining. What the car believes we have before, well, until a certain buffer. So the last time I measured, it was, well, we had to subtract a three kilowatt hour buffer or something. Uh, so the last time I measured about 68.8 kilowatt hours. So we will see how much it has de degraded for the last seven months and about 20,000 kilometers after, yeah. So, um, Let's wait a little bit more until it stops and then we do a test and the test will actually involve driving 90 kilometers per hour just back and forth here a little bit until we run out. Because remember, this is not a range test, it's a battery degradation test. And to measure it, I want to avoid hard acceleration. I want to avoid high power output because we want to measure in ideal conditions uh, how uh, the car performs. So don't bug me about driving under the speed limit on the motorway. I, it's not really a problem at all. I could have been driving on smaller roads here with lower speed limit, but that would take longer. And it's, it's way more convenient and safer to drive on the motorway here. So yeah. All right, charging is complete. 71.4 kilowatt hour. Let's go. All right, we've been driving for a while now. This is Nefunes. Uh, we've been driving for actually 117 kilometers. Well, this one is over-reporting, but it's not too, inter too uh, critical now. It's minus 13. That is also actually not uh, too relevant because this car keeps the battery nice and warm. So if you look here, 65% now. Uh, based on the numbers, 65% and the consumption, I worked out that we so far it could look like we have almost 69 kilowatt hour but it's still too early we have to keep driving it before we know how much we have okay we have been driving now for uh, almost two hours we're getting close to uh, whatever it doesn't matter okay here look oh, come on focus we just passed the 50 percent mark now and if you do the math now it looks like we have about 68 something kilowatt hour. Yeah, and it will probably drop towards the end. So I'm still thinking that it's going to be, uh, my guess is 67.5 kilowatt hour, which should be around 7% uh, degradation. So, all right, over here is not that cold. It's only minus eight. Ooh! Yeah, so just keep driving. All right, we're getting close to the end now. So we are down to 19.6% uh, left. And uh, if you look here now, it's now it seems like we should have about 67.4 kilowatt hour. Hmm, that is some significant drop in capacity. Okay, so I still have to drive about uh, 40, 50 more kilometers before and it started snowing a little bit. So yeah, I had to mention that the consumption is high. I mean, it's cold outside, it's minus 11. So just bear that in mind that uh, it could be that this car, I mean, it's, it spends a little bit extra juice and that, that um, we have slightly more losses. But the losses shouldn't be more than about 
1.2 kilowatt hour. That's my gut feeling. Oh, it started snowing. Wow. Uh, okay, so uh, just let you guys know that uh, the, the driving condition and the weather is not the best, so it, it could affect the, the test result. So if we did it on summer day, it might be better. It, we might get better result and lower uh, degradation. Right, we are back at Nebenes charging up. So if you look at the stats here, 324.5 kilometers and 202 consumption. And uh, we came uh, here with 2.2% left. So if we do the math now, it seems like we have actually only 67 kilowatt hour. I'm a little bit surprised. I was guessing 67.5. Uh, but uh, okay, and if we do the math based on you guys remember that the car estimated that we would get 71.4 before we left and then the car has in that one it's it has 3.2 kilowatt hour buffer so according to the BMS we're supposed to get a little over seven uh, a little over 68 kilowatt hour why didn't we get 68 kilowatt hour well just like every time I do degradation test whatever the BMS claims you can get is under ideal condition nominal remember they say nominal it's almost like in a lab in 20 degrees Celsius with a perfect discharge curve then you get 68 kilowatt hour but because of I guess driving winter whatever uh, we only get 67 kilowatt hour so it makes me wonder if we did it in summer and the consumption would be lower would we actually get 67.5 Okay, we don't know, but at least the result now is 67. So it means that right now it could look like we have 8% uh, degradation. Last time I measured, it was 6%. So it could seem like we have lost 2% since then. But again, if I did it in spring, we could get slightly better result. And then maybe in spring time, we would have something that points towards 7% degradation. But I still think this is a little bit, little bit high. And I also checked that, uh, fortunately, I checked the data for last time. Um, since l last time we checked, I had uh, DC charge 9,400 kilowatt hour and then AC was 5,200. And now we are at 11,800 and then uh, about 8,000 on, on uh, AC. So if you look at the, the diff here since for the last six months, six and a half months, I have actually been a good boy and I have AC charge more than I have a DC charge. In the early days of uh, this car, uh, I did some challenges, 1,000 km, I did lots of uh, German trips uh, and uh, the yeah I did lots of trips that require lots of fast charging but uh, now lately I've been only AC charging at home which is better for the battery but as you see I haven't driven that much but the battery still ages so if you guys remember this summer I also tested degradation on a Model S that was seven years old and many people pointed out that no but you didn't drive that much or I mean I didn't drive but that car didn't have that many kilometers well yes that is true but aging also degrades the battery that was my point of testing that old car so technically if I kept this car the MC Hammer <laughs> still for one year and we tried to measure the degradation there should still be slight slight degradation maybe just half percent but I also suspect that it's the fast charging that kind of accelerates the degradation of the battery because this battery once it heats up for supercharging the temperature in the pack hits 58 degrees Celsius and how healthy is it really to keep the battery at 58 degrees? Maybe at low-ish state of charge, it doesn't matter. Like right now we're at 58%, but once we go closer to 100% or 90%, we are still at 60, almost 60 degrees. And that might not be too healthy. So I guess if you want to be a ninja and you want to be paranoid, what you could do is you can avoid preheating when you go into a supercharger. Then the battery will be slightly colder and you won't get the best charging speed, which kind of sucks, of course. But uh, that means that uh, by the time you hit 70%, the battery won't be too hot. And then you can actually unplug and go to the next one. So you avoid going at 58%, uh, 58 degrees at high state of charge. And actually, practically, it might not matter because what I experience 
time after time after time, every time almost when I go on a road trip in wife is that when we take a foot break and we need to stop there anyway, the car charges too fast. So it wouldn't matter really. We could just skip supercharge, uh, skip preheating and basically it would be the same. We will finish charging by the time we finish eating. And if you're in a rush, then I guess for those times you don't care. So maybe that would be better, you we'll know. It's kind of hard for me to measure it, but yeah. So um, anyway, I think that's going to be it for now. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.